Now, sometimes you're watching wrestling and you go, bah, because you're scared. But look, there's nothing wrong with this. If you are emotionally invested and WWE or whoever is trying to put the fear into your heart and you react accordingly, well, I say you're having a damn good time. Now, I'm going to imagine that we've all been through this because most people do indeed start watching wrestling when they are but a child. And when you're a kid, you're basically stupid. So let's relive some of these memories and hope that a ghost doesn't attack. Ghosts are spooky and his 10 wrestling moments that scared the shit out of fans. Number 10, Doink the Clown. Now, there is actually something that I believe is pronounced colrophobia, which is a legitimate fear of clowns. But these days, when we refer to Doink in the wrestling context, most people just go, ha ha, that stupid character from back in the day. Well, this is not actually accurate when you go back to the debut. Because when Matt Bourne first pitched the character in 1992, he wanted it to be more like it and less like Bozo. So honestly, I tell you, when he does walk onto your screen for the first time, he's kind of being all playful, but you can just see in your eyes, he's a psychopath. And what happened to this gimmick is very sadly, Bourne had a bunch of personal issues, so he had to give it up. And it was only when other individuals stepped into the costume that it just became, oh man, I'm a clown. Look at my stupid red nose. So seriously, if you have some time today, travel back 30 years and check this out give you the heebie-jeebies and make you go, what could have been? Number nine, Shawn Michaels collapses. Way back on the November 20th, 1995 episode of Raw, Owen Hart hit Shawn Michaels with an insiguri and the heartbreak kid didn't get back up. And in fact, he didn't move at all, which is very strange for professional wrestling because as we know, when you do get hit by something, you have to flail around like you're some kind of dolphin out of the ocean because then the fans know that something's wrong. So given that HBK was still for ages and the fact that Owen and manager Jim Cornette were kind of going like, oh man, something is wrong here, everybody started to get worried that the worst had happened. Even Vince McMahon comes to the squared circle and is like, oh, sure, Michael's my boy. Are you all right? And actually, this was one of the first times that the World Wrestling Federation had started mucking around with concussions. Now look, admittedly, soon after this, it was clear that it was a work, but there is a good chunk of time where you feel it in your tum tum. Number eight, Buff Bagwell can't move. Now this one is kind of like number nine. However, it is obviously 10 times worse because this one was legit. Because on the 22nd of April, 1998 Thunder taping, Buff Bagwell took a bulldog from Rick Steiner. And as we now know, when they landed, he broke his neck and he wasn't able to move. Bagwell would also admit after the fact that he couldn't feel anything from the neck down. And the absolutely horrendous part of this is that obviously all the medical professionals had to get in the ring and try and help Buff. And the whole time you're like, oh man, please let this be fake. It wasn't. The venue goes completely quiet as well as Bagwell is put onto a stretcher and led out of there with a neck brace on. And thankfully, he was able to make a comeback after a few months. But seriously, man, we always have to remember how dangerous professional wrestling is. I swear sometimes we forget. Number seven, The Undertaker's debut. Now you knew this one was gonna come up because WWE loves that clip of that kid at Survivor Series 99 just going, oh my gosh, what the hell is that? But I was basically a fetus all those years ago and I too was watching like, ha ha, mama wanna leave. But seriously, if you had never watched this pay-per-view and focused on the audience when Mark Calloway is walking to the ring, I would implore you to change that today because some children, rightfully so, are hiding behind their parents because they think this psycho is about to kill them. It was also probably the ultimate litmus test that we were onto something here because again, you had human beings going, even though wrestling is meant to be fake. Just goes to show if you can portray it in the right way, you can control anything. That's why I still love this. All these years later, it just worked. Number six, the ultimate warrior needs CPR. Now, many people won't remember this because it never really made it to any pay-per-views, but on the house show circuit in 1991, the Ultimate Warrior and The Undertaker were basically having a massive feud. Now, a lot of these were casket and body bag matches, and yes, they did indeed lead us to superstars, when one day Taker found The Ultimate One and he put him in a coffin. As Vincent Man is on commentary too, he starts yelling, oh my gosh, he locked him in there. That man is gonna need some help. To the point that when they did pop it open, somebody just came out to give the Ultimate Warrior CPR. Now look, it is totally hokey now. If you find this footage, you'd be like, Simon, why did you even include it in the list? But you've got to remember, a lot of people that watching once again were eight years old, and they generally thought the Ultimate Warrior was dying. 
And if I mean me, yes, that's what I'm getting at. Number five, Kurt Angle wrestles with a broken neck. And this actually gets worse the more you know, because when I first sat down to watch the main event at WrestleMania 19, Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle, I was just like, oh wow, these two are great athletes, they're gonna have a great match. But now thanks to podcasts, interviews, and just a bunch of stories, we know that Kurt Angle was never meant to be in this thing because a doctor weeks beforehand had told him, listen, Kurt, you absolute maniac, your neck is broken, and if you fall on it the wrong way, you could die. Angle himself has said that after a chat with some child who was like, oh my gosh, Kurt, I want to see you at WrestleMania, he told Vince he was going to do it. So now you know that information is accurate, like I say. Go and watch it, and every single bump will make you want to cry. This also goes... 21 minutes and of course ends when Brock tries to join his party as he lands on his neck. Honestly, this one is too much for me and I'm out. Number four, Daniel Bryan's in ring return. And this is basically the exact same situation, except for we were all experiencing it in real time. Because nobody thought that Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, was ever going to come back to a wrestling ring. We had all seen his horrible and emotional retirement a few years prior. And then we were told, oh no, he has been cleared. And he's going to be in a match at WrestleMania 34 alongside Shane McMahon taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Now, clearly, Daniel had told everyone, look, if we're doing this, we're going whole hog. Because Owens and Zayn just absolutely kick his ass to the point I had to watch the whole thing like this. The absolute worst part, though, is when our two bad guys come together to powerbomb Brian on the ring apron. And honestly, to this day, 2022, years later, I was like, that's it. He's come back and now he's gonna be gone again. Although I'll level with you. Do I still feel this way every time I watch one of his matches? Yes. Number three, Mick Foley takes a very real beating. I remember watching the Royal Rumble 1999 and the crazy match between Mankind and The Rock and thinking after the like 40 second steel chair shot to the head, Maybe we shouldn't do this anymore. Now, it is still hard to piece all this together, although we do have the information from The Rock and from Mick Foley. And Foley said they were only meant to do about five or six of these, but then Dwayne Johnson got carried away. And if that is the case, what the hell are we playing at? What absolutely drags this down into the depths is the Beyond the Map footage, where you also see Foley's family at ringside, who can't handle this to such a degree, they're crying and they leave. There's also a bunch of interviews with Mankind afterwards and it's quite clear he has been knocked senseless. And honestly, this should never have happened then and I hope it never happens again. The brain is important, everybody. Make sure you protect yours. Number two, Jake Roberts sets a snake on Randy Savage. Not only was this scary for the people who were supporters of Randy Savage, but even the macho man, when he was first pitched his idea, was like, it's great and all, I'm not doing it. Still though, back in 1991, the plan was to allow Damien the snake to come out of his bag, go into Jake's arms, and actually bite Randy Savage on the arm. I will tell you this, I wouldn't have done it either. Beforehand, Savage also demanded that the snake bit somebody else to prove that it wasn't venomous. And even though it didn't have any of that poison left, this is still absolutely disgusting. I mean, the fangs go into Macho Man's skin and he bleeds because of course he does. Although it's hard to criticize this one, because I tell you what, that was amazing. This was also going on during a time when the WWF was super family friendly. So it absolutely knocked people's socks off like mine are right now, and you're never gonna know whether I'm telling the truth. Number one, Jerry Lawler stops breathing at ringside. Now, of course, a lot of what we have talked about today have been storyline angles that maybe went a little bit too far, but nothing can compare you to Jerry Lawler actually having a real life heart attack live on the air. I mean, this happened years ago, and I tell you, I don't think I'm over it. It was on the 10th of September 2012 episode of Raw, and as the primetime players and Daniel Bryan and Kane were having a tag team match, all of a sudden the king does go super quiet and Michael Cole is like, oh man, Jerry, are you okay? And the answer is that he wasn't and a bunch of medical personnel had to come out and quite literally save his life. And as Jerry said after the fact, imagine I'd been in a hotel room and not in a building surrounded by people, I'd probably be dead. Now he did make a full recovery, but this happened a decade ago and it still absolutely freaks me out because it just goes to show, and I'm gonna be cheesy here, how precious life is. You've got to enjoy every moment, you've got to enjoy every day, you've got to enjoy every month and you've got to enjoy every year. 
because we just don't know what's around the corner. Now any of the moments in wrestling that scared the shit out of you, make sure you let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, share the video and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles and turn around, come back this way and follow us on social media before staying on the channel and watching another video. My name is Simon Whatculture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. See you soon.